Greetings, I'm Professor Kay, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about capturing that fourth and final flag for the Capture the Flag exercise forensics. Before we get too far along, I want to say thank you to the author who wrote this wonderful Capture the Flag exercise. Let me make sure I pronounce his name correctly, Panvandeep Singh. And uh, you can find him and a lot of other great authors for articles and tutorials on the Hacking Articles website. If I misspoke and told you that we were no longer having any use for the target machine, I spoke too quick. So on this last flag, we will have to have that Metapreter session established with the target machine, but we can do that real quickly just by reestablishing that SSH login auxiliary scanner. And we're going to do that right now by opening up a terminal. And at the terminal, we're just going to use our up arrows and go through the commands. And we're going to start off with MSF console. This is going to allow us to launch Metasploit. Give it a second to start up. And so my Metasploit has started up. Now make sure both your Kali and the target are both configured for host-only networking. And we're going to use our up arrow. We're just going to find that scanner one more time. And there it is. And it's the use space auxiliary forward slash scanner forward slash ssh forward slash ssh underscore login hit enter now we're just going to configure it with the remote host hit enter now this is my ip address for my remote host your ip address will differ we're going to set the username and now we're going to set the password and finally we're going to run the exploit Give it just a moment to fire up that scanner. Now to get to the Metapreter session, we're going to need to send our Metasploit session to the background. We're going to do this by assigning it to session number of one. Hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is bring our Metapreter session to the front by telling Kali or Metasploit that we want to have access to that session number two. There we go. Go ahead and hit enter. And now we have our Metapreter prompt. So the next thing we have to do is get back that bash shell. So to do this, at the Metapreter prompt, I'm just going to type in the word shell. Hit enter. Now we don't have a prompt, but we do have the ability to input text. So I'm going to take that small piece of code, that small snippet of Python code, and I'm going to copy and paste that into this prompt here now make sure you get this little tick right here that's very important go ahead and hit enter and we're now logged on as sasus at ubuntu using a bash shell we're going to go ahead and leave this shell running and we're going to open up another one now for this shell here i'm just going to type in the word autopsy hit enter i'm now going to copy the address for the web application autopsy and I'm going to go up here to my programs and from the context menu I'm going to launch a web browser in the address bar I'm just going to paste that address I just copied hit enter and let's give autopsy a couple of moments here to load up inside of our web browser and so autopsy has loaded up and we're going to open up an existing case so click on the button here where it says open case on this next page you're going to select the case that you want to open i'm going to go ahead and accept the default for my forensic ctf case i'll say okay to that on this next screen we're going to go ahead and accept the host for the case and that is the forensics machine now we're going to go ahead and accept the volume or the partition that we created and we're going to analyze it click on the analyze button there and from here we're going to go up to the top and from the taskbar, we're going to click on where it says File Analysis. Now I'm going to pull down this bottom window just a little bit. And from the right window pane, I'm going to scroll on down until I find those two files. Now the file that we're currently interested in is the creds.txt. Go ahead and open that up. Bring up our window here just a little bit. And you're going to see that we've got a piece of code. This is probably going to be base64. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and copy it, like so. 
And now we're going to open up a third terminal session. What we're going to do now is use Kali to decipher that base64 piece of code that we've gotten from that file. To do this, I'm going to type in the word echo, give it a space, do a double quote, and now I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that little snippet of code that we got from that file. I'm going to close it off with another double quote, give it a space, type in a pipe, give it a space, and now we're going to use the base64 utility to decipher this text. Once I have everything in correctly, I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and it comes back and it gives us the deciphered code. Now, this I believe we're going to find out to be a password. We're going to leave this terminal up and we're going to go back to our first terminal over on shell number one. Now back over here at our first terminal session, we're going to begin enumerating the user account for SASUS. So to begin this process, we're just going to do some looking around and we're going to begin with his home directory. So I'm going to type in cd space forward slash home, hit enter. I'm now inside of his home directory. We want to see what he has inside of his home directory, so we're going to list the contents by typing in ls, hit enter. Inside SASUS's home directory, we find two other directories, Forensics and JASUS. So we're now going to see if there is actually a user called Forensics. And to do this, we're going to see if we can log on as that individual. To do this, I'm going to type in SU, followed by the name of the user I want to log on as, which is Forensic. Hit Enter. It wants that password. Now, we're going to go ahead and use that password that we discovered from the Base64 decryption. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. Hit enter. And now we're inside of the user's profile for Forensic. To find out what kind of a user Forensic is, we can do a sudo space dash small letter L and that will tell us what commands are at this individual's disposal. So I'm going to type in sudo space dash small letter L. Hit enter. And again it wants that password for the user. I'm going to go ahead and paste it one more time in here. Hit enter. And it comes back and it says, User Forensic may run the following commands on Ubuntu and all the commands. Pretty much says that Forensic is running as root. So we next want to go ahead and do a bash. So I'm going to type in sudo bash. Hit enter. And we're now logged on as root. I'm going to go ahead and type in ls see what we have here and we have a root.txt file let's go ahead and cat that out see what we have so I'm going to type in cat root.txt hit enter and we have our fourth and we have our final flag so I hope you enjoyed going through this capture the flag exercise with me and so that's all the time we have for this short video presentation so if you got any questions you got any concerns don't hesitate to reach out and contact me, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you in my next video.